I'm joined now by my guest who will help us, you know, break down the key findings of the World Bank in its Africa polls report that was re released recently. I'm joined now by Dr. Ali Ilias, who is an economic analyst. Thank you, Doctor, for joining us on Business Daily this morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I will want to begin by hearing your thoughts. You have heard from uh, social media commenters, and one of the most of them rather seem to be pointing towards a certain direction, saying, you know, that that maybe the advice from the World Bank shouldn't be taken too seriously, and that we should focus on building a more localized economy. And some are saying that it was the World Bank's, you know, um, advice to float the naira. And now the World Bank is saying, oh, the Naira is one of the worst performing currencies in Africa, you know, in comparison with other currencies such as the Kenyan shilling, which the World Bank also did say came out as the top performing currency. But looking at all of this, you know, concerns from Nigerians, what are your thoughts? All right. I think it's quite a challenging period and uh, it's coming during that World Bank is behind our state of the economy because they uh, actually advise us to go ahead in a particular direction and uh, they're also saying that that direction we are going is still the worst uh, direction so it's becoming surprising to see that and i think I, at this point in time we need to be more conscious of geoeconomics whereby every region every sector every country uh, look at internally look at their problems and prefer some uh, local solution as well because sometimes if you keep taking everything from World Bank, hook, line, and sinker, you becomes, uh, it becomes a, a, a serious problem like we are seeing now. And you can also hear the projection they gave us that uh, from the trajectory we are having now, before Nigeria can be okay, it will take us 15 years. And that's quite uh, alarming. And I can agree with you. I can tell you that I think that's not correct in economies because, uh, you know, if you do what you're supposed to do, at least two, three years, you see uh, an outcome of your good policy spoken to you know this report that we get from the world bank and sometimes from the imf we see the article 4 consultation report you know being released by the imf from quarter to quarter and the africa pulse report from the world bank you know giving projections outlook and calling out figures really reeling out numbers but but you have said that maybe this is we shouldn't be taking this um, projections uh hook line and sinker and should focus more on building a more localized economy what in your opinion are you know the the major steps or the low-hanging fruit steps that nigeria should take you know towards building that right our major problem now if you ask me is a forex problem because we have a supply side problem for forex because if we get uh, more forex i think that would have helped the naira and naira would have appreciated them more and will not be compared to build or uh, South, uh, South Sudan pounds at uh, that level, a war averaging country comparing Nigerian currency to that country. Mm. So I think we need to look at uh, how we can really do that. And I can see uh, a lot of about 26 policy that uh, the CBN governor have tried to work on, you know, stopping BTA, uh, BTA you know, uh, reducing uh, BDC, a lot of things have been put in place, but uh, we can see it's not yielding results. Uh, because we are doing it uh, in World Bank or let me say Britain Wood institution uh, way, we must start looking at it in a local way. Uh, and you also see the same World Bank, they will project that Africa is going to grow 3.3, and now you know, Sub Saharan Africa is going to grow 3.3 now they are now saying no it may not be possible the same who projected that nigeria also will grow at a particular level and now say no it's not possible again you can see it's quite sometimes uh back and forth even on their but that shows that they don't have the crystal ball themselves they are trying to just project so it's about projection so i think it's a projection we must do the hard work and making sure our economy are working in general Hmm. Uh, we will still be looking at some specifics from that report, especially in the area of, you know, GDP growth, growth projections for Nigeria, growth projections for Africa, and of course, you know, uh, projections regarding the effects of the increase in Nigeria's interest rate and more after the break. And my guest, who is Dr. Aliu Ilias, is still with me. We'll be back after the break to stay. 
and you are still watching Business Daily coming to you live on Trust TV. And just before the break, we started our conversation proper and we are looking at key findings from the recently released World Bank Africa Polls report. And if you can have, you know, details of the key findings from that report displayed on the screen. And part of those findings is that the Naira has depreciated by approximately 43% year to date, making it one of the worst performing currencies along with the Ethiopian B and the South Sudanese pound and that Nigeria's gross domestic product will grow by 3.3 percent in the year 2024 and that Nigeria's GDP is expected to accelerate slightly to 3.6 percent during the 2025 to 2026 removal of fuel subsidies or 2026, then removal of fuel subsidies in mid-2023 uh, led to a sharp rise in gasoline prices by an additional 40 to 45 percent in September of 2024. And those are just a few of some of the many, you know, indicators or indications that Nigeria should look at, according to the World Bank. But I have my guest still right here with me on the program in the person of Dr. Aliu Ilyas. He is an economic analyst. Thank you again, Dr. For for coming on the program this morning. Thank you for having me on our Okay. I will want for us to continue by, you know, some of the projections by the World Bank, starting off with the GDP growth projection uh, for Nigeria. The World Bank has, of course, stated a 3.3% growth for 2024 and uh, saying that this is slightly higher than what we should expect for the years 2025 and 2026. But I will want to hear from you, looking at this projection and past projections in the past, we have seen uh, times where the World Bank will, will you know give a certain projection and then would we'll tweak it with time but but is this projection in particular realistic looking at the current economic indicators right I'm the current economic uh, indicators honestly uh, the projection we have to look at it with cautious optimism because if you look at Nigeria economy as it is now most uh, businesses are handicapped in terms of energy uh, energy uh, costs and in terms of uh, forex, and in terms of even going to bank to borrow, and these are the we, we seem to have lost Dr. Aliu Ilias uh, there. But while we try to have him rejoin us on the program, we are speaking about the recently released Africa Polls report by the World Bank. Uh, part of the findings from that report, according to the World Bank, is that the Naira has depreciated by approximately 43% year to date. That is the start of the year till today, making it one of the worst performing currencies along with the Ethiopian B and the South Sudanese pound. I'll just point out that the World Bank also did say that the Kenyan shillings uh, emerged as the best performing currency across the sub-Saharan African region. And the, the, the report also did say that Nigeria's gross domestic product, that is Nigeria's GDP, will grow by 3.3% in the year 2024 and some have been you know, most economic watchers and economic analysts that are you know trying to decipher whether that is you know realistic considering the current economic indicators from inflation to current gdp numbers that we've gotten per quarter to you know uh trade and our capital importation to unemployment and this other uh, major economic indicators. Uh, he also did, uh, the World Bank rather also did say that Nigeria's GDP is expected to accelerate slightly by 3.6% during uh, 2025 to 2026 and that the removal of fuel subsidies by mid of 2023, that is, you will recall that did happen on the 27th of May uh, 2023, that that has impacted on energy prices and has also, you know, impacted on inflationary pressures. But while we uh, try to uh, have him rejoin us, I'll just point out that, you know, 
I'll just point out that uh, there are concerns, especially from a social media users, like we had pointed out earlier, regarding you know the submissions by the World Bank uh, and uh, most Brenton Woods institutions, the World Bank and the IMF and the likes. But I believe uh, we have our guest back with us on the program. Dr. Ali Ilyas is, is back with us, I believe. Oh, yeah, we do have him here with us again. Uh, Dr., you were speaking regarding the projections and how realistic these projections are. Right. Uh, the, the, the projection is to be taken with cautious optimism because uh, most indicators are presently is just negative because if you look at the uh, manufacturing sector or let's look at MSME or let's look at the production sector, is that they do not have the strength to actually uh, produce at the maximum uh, level. In fact, most capacity are not well utilized. So, And it is the summation of all this uh, productivity that we're going to use to you know, get our GDP. If you look at the energy security, you know, the cost of uh, PMS is very, very high. The cost of electricity is very, very high. You also look at Forex. You know, you cannot dare to import things because if you look at even the uh, tariff at the port authority is not actually helping. And if you look at Forex, it's also not helping. So all the indicators is quite a negative as it were now. So I think uh, we have to hold uh, that uh, their projection with uh, uh, cautious optimism. I'm not sure we can achieve that 3.3 uh, 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 projection as, as stipulated by the World Bank. Mm. And, and regarding our currency and how the Naira is faring, you know, in comparison with other local currencies or currencies across the sub-Saharan African region, we have, you know, stated countless times already that the World Bank did say that the Nigerian Naira is among one of the worst performing currencies. But what the World Bank also did highlight is that this is happening due to the surging demand for the dollar. And what br that brings to mind again is the concept of the dollarization of the Nigerian economy. And we have, you know, heard the CBN continually, you know, say that part of its concerns has been that. But, but let's hear from you. We have seen reforms come from the CBN, but is that enough to address concerns such as the, the dollarization of the Nigerian economy? Right. It's, it is clear that the Nigerian economy is being dollarized because everything is being tied to, to dollar. If you want to purchase anything, you have to consider the rate of dollar. Dollar is now 1,700 in the parallel, uh, parallel markets, and that is a factor that determines everything a businessman wants to do in Nigeria. Even if you want to pay anything, it has to be pegged alongside. And like I always said, we have supply side problems. So government needs to do more. Because if you look at, since the Nera has been floated, where you have willing buyer, willing seller, it has become so difficult for, for Nigerians. And it has devalued our money uh, to, to, to the level at which we have never seen uh, before. Imagine we are being compared to a uh, uh, bill of uh, Ethiopia and uh, uh, pounds of uh, Southern, uh, South Sudan. That shows the level at the, uh, that we are at the ebb of uh, at the value of, of Naira. And I think uh, we should hold the federal government and the CBA led by Yemi Kadoso responsible uh, for this because it's because of the policy uh, direction. You cannot remove first subsidy, flood the Naira, and also making sure that you are not also helping the uh come out the business entity to go bank to borrow because of the level of interest rate so it is serious uh problem that we need to rethink uh, very well recall that we are not only suffering uh, the forex problem it has also translates to the cost of energy that is the mainstay of any productive uh, entity uh, in nigeria so i think it's a challenge that we need to solve as soon as possible if you want to really get out of this uh, uh challenging economy uh, that is indeed a serious challenge, like you rightly stated, and, you know, has become quite concerning, especially how it is impacting on trade and on MSME's performances here in Nigeria. But, but I will want for us to speak regarding the, the best performing currencies. The, the World Bank did point out that the Kenyan shilling and the South African rand, you know, are showing signs of recovery. And if you look at this uh, pattern, these are countries that make one of the top uh, 
um, GDP countries, with the major GDPs as far as the African uh, sub-Saharan African region is concerned. And Nigeria indeed belongs on that list. But on this other list, we see that the Naira is not performing as well as we expect for it to. But what can we, you know, take or replicate from countries such as South Africa or Kenya, you know, that have helped in strengthening their local currencies? Right. I think uh, it's just their policy direction. You know, policy direction is key. You recall not quite long. Uh, the Kenyan citizen actually protested against uh, William Ruto uh, because of his direction, policy direction, and he actually uh, reversed. That shows that even against the expectation of the Western and British world institution, you actually reverse some things. So it is when we decide to actually at, look at local challenges and, you know, and profile solution. You also look at South Africa. South Africa belongs to a bloke, uh, the BRICS. You know, the BRICS are actually help South Africa a lot. You know, when you need fund, when you need economic, I mean, business partner, economic partner. But for we, we just want to rely on the uh, British world institutions until we look at uh, a better way of looking at our currency. You know, you look at uh, uh, um, China Yuan. Most Nigerians trade with China now. And I can tell you, as at this level now, the most country that we traded with uh, currently is China. So what is making us to still use dollar to buy item from uh, from China? Why not use China, Chinese currency and Nigerian currency? That would have reduced pressure on dollar. You know, the supply side would have reduced and give rise to uh, another alternative uh, currency. These are the things we must start to look at. If we continue to depend on dollar every now and then, I think we'll continue to see this uh, problem. So we must find a way to deal with other currency, especially the, the Chinese uh, currency, because they are major uh, trade uh, partner. Then we must also now work on our banking sector. You know, having a look at what uh, Cardoso tried to do by reducing the BDC and whatever, it shows it does not make any headway. Even also look at what it did to cryptocurrency, believing that they are behind the hike, the hike in the uh, uh, value of uh, dollar. It's still the same. I think we need to do more uh, to really paint this ongoing problem but the major problem we must look at is that forex we must make sure we help the supply side to make sure things get better at the point we are even thinking is because we are owing airlines like emirates among others you know now we are paid uh significantly it's still not coming uh, down that shows that we must rethink our demand we have also decided to buy oil crude oil from dangote uh, in naira you know, that is another factor. Now, Dangote is now supplying us. We are reducing the level at which uh, we demand for us. Dangote, I mean, importation of fuel take about 40% of our forex. But now that it's local, we must ramp up things and make sure that it actually works so that we will not erode this benefit. So maybe going forward, by the time Dangote is stabilized, we think maybe the, the value we still have, uh, I mean, Nera value we start to appreciate as it were. We remain optimistic regarding that and, you know, hope that indeed, like you rightly stated, the Naira would start to appreciate in the short to medium term. But away from uh, discussions on the Naira, uh, another very interesting point that the World Bank did state was that there, that we should, you know, expect to see further, further um, hike in interest rate in the coming uh, months or in the coming uh, MPC meetings. And, you know, we have seen so far about 850 basis point increase just in the year 2024 alone with the interest rate currently standing at 27.25%. And, you know, most people would say that is already too high for, you know, businesses to, 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 to stay afloat considering the current uh, business climate. But here we have the World Bank saying that maybe we should expect for that increase. But, but let's hear from you. What are your thoughts on this projection uh, regarding uh, interest, rate, uh, interest rate hike? Well, for me, I think the best thing is for uh, the CBN governor alongside his team during the MPC upcoming meeting to tarry, to just uh, stay put without increasing. Because to increase uh, the... Interest it will show that they are not sensitive matters of taste. That means they are not really uh, in tandem with the state of the economy. So for me, I think they should ignore uh, what the World Bank is saying. They should tarry, they should hold on and see how, you know, the uh, over time their policy direction on reducing reduction of inflation will work. We cannot continue using the same thing. For the past one year now, we have seen about 850 basis uh, point increment. 
of uh, interest rates and it does not yield any results recall even the marginal decrease in inflation that we saw in july and august is a function of uh, our produce uh, which is seasonal in nature so i think uh they should tarry and hold on if they, if that means that they, they are not understand they don't have good understanding of but, but you have asked for the CBN to pause and watch. When, when you say pause, how long, uh, you know, would you ask for, uh, for the CBN to watch, you know, before either increasing or decreasing the NPR? Right. They can just do this and look at wait until the next MPC. The next MPC we must have seen two significant uh, uh, reports maybe from uh, uh, CB, I mean, uh, Nigeria, the NBC, um, well, NBS, Nigeria Bureau of Statistics would have given us so that would have seen how effective those things are. Because the, the more you keep increasing, the more people run from the Nigeria GDP continue to lose. You can see, you can even see the contradiction uh, for World Bank now. World Bank is projecting that Nigeria uh, will have uh, seven point uh, three point three uh, increments in GDP. And the same is also saying that they should continue to increase the interest rate. So if you increase the interest rate, business person, business entity will want to shut down. And I can tell you, a lot of companies have shut down because of these uh, interest rate increments, because of the uh, forex challenges, and because of uh, energy security. It's a serious issue that they need to tarry at this point in time. I would like for us to touch on inflation. We did see recent inflation data released by the NBS for the month of September that goes to show that Nigeria's inflation currently stands at 32.7%. But looking at the World Bank report, the World Bank did say that it wasn't you know, particular to just Nigeria, as we have countries such as Ethiopia and Ghana also experiencing you know, inflationary pressures. But looking at that now, and the World Bank is saying that we should expect Expect, you know some easing maybe at the beginning of 2025 do you agree with that submission from the world bank you know see again the current economic um indicators well i i recall i discussed this uh, in this your studio the other time that um, the in, the reduction we saw the last time was a function of uh, uh, farm uh, new produce, which is seasonal. And I also said that with the increment we have just seen in the, the cost of PMS, there is going to be increase in uh, uh, inflation. So I think we have not solved this major structural problem. And what are the structural problems? We agree that the two things is pushing this inflation. It is the cost of PMS that is pushing it more, and also the uh, forex, and also the challenge of insecurity. This is a legacy problem that we can actually see uh, but ourselves, until we solve this major problem, I don't think we will have a, a way out of this uh, uh, challenging uh, inflation. And like I said, we should stop approach, applying hawkish approach where you are sacrificing the growth uh, for to reduce uh, inflation. It is when you allow growth, sometimes it will, in the long run, uh, bring about a uh, reduction in inflation. So I think we must solve the major the major problem. You know, government said refinery will work. We've not seen it work. Government said CNG will be available uh, at like a brick and mortar. We have not also seen it. So it's uh, that is a challenging uh, thing. So for I don't think uh, inflation is going likely to, to, to come down uh, from the look of things. But the approach that CBN, I mean, the World Bank is giving is not the best uh, for Nigerian economy. But, but, but I will want to hear your projection, your GDP projection for the full year now, the 2024 um, annual annual year for Nigeria. What are your thoughts? Are? The World Bank is saying 3.3% GDP growth. But what would you say, you know, is more realistic? Well, I look at uh, GDP because of the challenges of uh, uh, inflation, challenges of uh, forex, challenges of fuel. Uh, price hike. So I am thinking we will hover around 3.1% uh, because of the state of the economy. It will be difficult for us to achieve that 33 because uh, I would only about 3.6 for 2025, but this 2024 is quite, uh, I think I would like to stand with 3.1% GDP. And we could reel out all the numbers, we could, you know, call out all the data, but, but what the average Nigerian is more 
uh, concerned about is how this, you know, does impact their state of livelihood and their pockets, basically. But I will want for you to speak regarding that now. What immediate policy actions we should be taking from the monetary side of government to the fiscal side of government to alleviate, you know, Nigerians that are currently grappling with the current economic uh, challenges? Right. I think on the uh, fiscal side, I would like to uh, encourage the National Assembly and President to speed up the executive bill on the new tax reform. I think that will have uh, some level of uh, impact, especially the one that say that if you are doing business less than 25 million naira, you could be excluded from some, uh, is it from VAT? Then also if you are a salary earner of 70,000 naira, you can get uh, tax itself. I think that, and also ultimately that if you are any more than 100 million, you'll be paying tax of 25% if the uh, our elites will comply. I think that's a very good one on the fiscal side. Uh, the only challenge we have on fiscal side is the issue of uh, custom tariff. I think that's as well. And I think the challenge of forex is also affecting that. But in terms of of MP, MP really mean a lot. Then also, in terms of forex, that they should do more of the forex supply to different uh, windows that you can uh, approach. Then, Willing, uh, willing, does never help, and I think we should review that uh, area. Mm. Dr. Ali Ilyas, who is an economic analyst, speaking to recent report released by the World Bank, that is the Africa Pulse Report. Thank you, Doctor, for all the insights you've shared with us on the program today. And uh, just before we go, uh, we would just like to again look at the key findings from that report as released by the World Bank, you know, the Africa Pulse report, uh, major findings, talking about GDP projections and the likes, if you can have that displayed, uh, where the World Bank is saying that Nigeria is expected to record about 3.3% GDP growth for the year 2024. The World Bank also is saying that the Naira emerged as one of the worst performing currencies in Africa depreciating by 43 percent from year from the start of the year to date that is today's date along with the ethiopian b and the south sudanese uh, pound and that the gdp is expected to accelerate slightly by 3.6 percent between the years 2025 and 2026 and the removal of fuel subsidies in mid 2023 led to a sharp rise in gasoline prices by an additional 40 to 45 percent in the yes uh, in the month of september 2024 but that's all we will be taking today on the program but keep the conversation going across all our social media platforms and facebook on youtube and instagram and of course on x and we will we'll be there to you know respond to your questions and respond to your comments my name is tia makai thank you for watching and bye for now